Who are you? I represent a multinational consortium of like-minded individuals involved in the Okay, that's enough. And you are... Elizabeth Nordlinger. And, uh... Liz. You're the artist. I'm the artist. So what can you tell us about your training as an artist? Well, um, I always did a lot of art starting from when I was very small um, and in high school. Uh, and, and then in college, I thought, well, I've done lots of art. And so I started uh, beginning a freshman year with an intermediate painting class. And it, I was way in over my head. And so it was, I was really discouraged because um, I didn't really know what I was doing. So it took two years before I took another class, what which was, was um, Amherst College in Massachusetts. And, um, and it was a, a figure drawing class. But, you know, again, that was quite difficult. And so I, I was sort of... I thought, oh, I, I love art and I'm good at it, but, but it sort of set me back a bit. And then um, I was an English major because uh, I just didn't think, you know, I could really do anything as an artist, you know, seriously. Uh, but but um, in New York, when I was working after college at Self Magazine, uh, I took some classes in the evenings at um, Parsons. Parsons School of Design, mm -hmm. so, um, oh, I think it was a drawing class. It was, one was sort of pretty random, it was drawing and painting. Um, another one was printmaking, and that was really fun, mm -hmm. and then another one was um, silk screening, so those two were good. Mm -hmm. and I remember the, uh, the teacher who taught the printmaking class said something at one point about, um, you have to pay your dues, and I remember, again, sort of thinking, oh, you know, it just seemed like <laughs> there was such a long road ahead. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so art was just sort of always something that was on the side. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really been practicing with painting or drawing. Uh, I, I started doing collage because that seemed very accessible, mm -hmm. you know, just sort of having papers around magazines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then kind of little by little I was looking for a teaching job after I finished the program, uh, which was the one I was in was geared for um, high school English. Uh, I decided I didn't want to be a high school English teacher and there weren't any jobs at the time. So I was doing substitute teaching and then um, had substituted some art classes and then uh, started teaching after school art classes. But anyway, I did get a job as an art teacher at um, Key School in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. And sort of around the same time, because that was a part-time job, um, I I um, decided to start taking more classes, so I took I took a really good watercolor class or two at Kenyatta College, and then I had a really good um, drawing teacher there also. Um. So, are there any particular influences on your work that you think would be helpful for people to know about in, in looking at your work? Um. Yeah. Uh, I think the first artist who, uh, and sort of in recent times, who influenced me was um, maybe Russell Chatham. I saw his paintings in a gallery in Aspen maybe 15 years ago or so, and um, you know, beautiful landscapes, very atmospheric. Uh, actually, it was sort of in Aspen that I saw three artists whose work really sort of influenced me, got me started. You know, when I was painting seriously, um, Russell Chatham. Wade Hofer, who's a California artist, again, very atmospheric, um, and uh, uh, Richard Mistrax, the photographer, mm -hmm. does those, you know, I just remember seeing, like, you know, photographs that sort of covered a whole wall, and uh, um, Salt Lake City, and uh, the, the, ooh, the salt flats, mm -hmm. and, and the water, and the sky, and, uh, What is it about landscapes <coughs> that attracts you? Um, yeah. I know I thought about that, um, <clears throat> and I don't feel like I have a real. Uh, it, it's it's sort of a feel. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of like this attraction. It's like I I like being outside. I think if someone gave me a choice of either being um, inside or outside, I would say you know only one. Mm -hmm. I would be outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and with, with, uh, the impression it's been all the bugs and the heat and uh, Yeah, I mean, it, it's really uncomfortable, yeah. but I, it's something about um, seeing the sky and the light. Um, I, yeah, like a, a moth to the flame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to pursue a couple of things. So, uh, <coughs> so you're talking about landscape. Um, a lot of times pe people talk about a sense of place. Is that something that... Uh, is, is, is important to you in landscape? Uh, Evoking a sense of place? Yeah, and I think that was something that sort of, I didn't really figure that out right away, but when I was, um, when I started painting seriously with oil paints, which is what I do mostly now, um, I was doing a lot of uh, landscapes from my imagination. I was just putting the paint on the paper and then um, wiping stuff away and then like shapes would start to emerge. And after a while I realized this the same scene was happening. It was almost like a stage that was like trees on both sides mm -hmm. and then the water in the distance and the sky. You know, and I thought later, I was like, oh, it's like a stage with, you know, curtains coming down. And I realized that that's a view that I know from childhood um, where my parents live on Cape Cod. It's like looking down to the water <coughs> from their driveway mm -hmm. and there are trees on both sides. And, uh, and so I realized, you know, after, you know, painting what I thought was California, that it was a lot of influence from from uh, Massachusetts and back east. And, uh, so it was partly, partly interior landscapes too. Yeah. Um, and then I I think um, once I realized that, I started working more from photographs. You know, I would take a lot of photographs to sort of study, you know, the, the aspects of, you know, getting kind of like more of the details. So do you how, how much uh, plein, plein air work do you do? How much do you work do you do out, out in nature? And how much? You know, I used to. Um, I used to drive around, and then, and it would take about 30, 40 minutes, like to find a spot where I felt safe. And well, first I had to find a spot that I liked, you know, that um, that attracted me. And then I had to find a, a place where I could park the car. And then I had, and then I wanted to feel safe because a couple times people would stop and come over, and I'd think, oh God, you know, and. Uh, but they just wanted to see what I was working on, and um, and that's when um, I got my first cell phone. Actually, that was mm -hmm. kind of a nice thing to have, uh, mm -hmm. just to feel a little more secure. But then also, I I just kind of my uh, the period of time I had to paint was just getting shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, like I just didn't. I sort of had to get to work, and so driving around looking for a spot wasn't so convenient. So I don't do that as much, but I sort of feel like. Um, now I'd like to get back into it. Mm -hmm. So kind of the period where I stopped doing that and now where I can, it's like I've had two kids and, and now they're, mm -hmm. they're grown up and so I can have a little more time to get out and do that. But right now I'm still sort of working uh, in the studio and, and a lot from, from photographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess I would, I would like them to, to look at the work that I've done and, and get <coughs> Somewhat of that same sense of, oh, that's, you know, uh, an amazing scene, or, or that's beautiful, or that same sense of peace or beauty that mm -hmm. I have, you know, that kind of something, <coughs> you know, it's almost like, oh, look at this, I want to show you this, mm -hmm. you know, um, sort of sharing that. Mm -hmm. See if I can convey it. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see, um, Painting or even beauty as being um, re relevant to to the contemporary world. I mean, is, is it the how much how much how much beauty can artists create before we have enough beauty and we can move on to something else? Is, is the question. You know, I guess like something like beauty and and light. I guess for me that's like an infinite thing. That's like you know that there could never be enough mm -hmm. of that and. And I and I know like I think of a lot of modern art. It's, it's like fun. It's interesting. You know, like it, it sort of grabs me you know, like on a humor level. Mm -hmm. And I and I and that really appeals to me too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sort of torn because I sort of feel like I could go in two directions. And for some reason, I'm always sort of like by myself heading down the road of like um, you know trying to capture that mm -hmm. ethereal beauty and, and sort of like and it just seems like like really hard in a way, and I think, well, why, don't, why don't I don't go down this road that I went down for politics not as usual, where I had a lot of fun doing that painting, um, but somehow, like, the other way seems, like, deeper. It just seems like there's more depth to it. It's like, 
like layers and layers and layers. Mm -hmm. You know that. Um, mm -hmm. So are you a modern artist? Um, I I think so. Even though that people would look at my work and say it's very sort of traditional or conventional in a way, but I think. Um, I mean, I sort of have an idea of where I want to go with it, but it's it's kind of hard to put it into words. But I think it would make it um, modern. <laughs> yeah. So I want to ask you some questions about technical aspects of your work. Um, you, you work primarily in oil paint, but you... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Although if I go on a trip, I'll bring watercolors with me and you know pencils. But really, you know, when I get to work, when I say okay, I'm going to go to work, I pull out the oil paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oil is a hard hard medium to work with. How do you uh, how do you keep it? Uh, I think a lot of, a lot of people have difficulty with just keeping their intentionality in it. You know, if they want something to be a crisp blue, <coughs> how do they keep it? You know. From blurring with something else, or do you, do you, how do you approach that? How do you keep your colors clean and neat and clean and you know they're going to be muddy or mm. perhaps they're going to be um, you know desaturated or that, that, um, it's intentional. Um, well, I use a lot of brushes. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have a lot of brushes out, so I try not to like use the same brush and then you know go from like. And a green to yellow, or purple to yellow, or whatever. Um, <coughs> and and then sometimes if if an area seems like it's gotten muddy, I'll just like paint over it again and, and kind of start again. Uh, but I did really sort of start painting seriously with watercolor. So a lot of times when I'm painting with oil, I almost feel like, oh, I could start from light and then get darker, or I could do it more traditional. So a lot of times, like with a painting, I'll start kind of lighter and that way I you know I can kind of <coughs> keep the lighter area. Uh water watercolor of course is much less forgiving to you. Yeah, so right. So I think oil is a lot easier than watercolor. Yeah. yeah. So you have to plan, plan, plan yeah. planning it's uh, watercolor. <coughs> yeah. Um but a, a lot of times I feel like I kill my paintings. Um because <laughs> mm -hmm. I overwork them. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like um I'm, I strive to stay sort of fresh mm -hmm. and uh, and and keep a lot of you know brush marks and stuff and not get too like uh, careful and and precious. Um, and one problem is that I'm I'm really attracted to detail. So mm -hmm. like when I see something, you know, like I love to sort of you know dive down in there mm -hmm. and kind of work on it. But then I almost like have to slap myself or pull myself away mm -hmm. and stop it enough, you know, mm -hmm. and and to keep it you know, from getting too overworked. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of a con. Um, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do, do you enjoy the work? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. You know, I do, but sometimes it's really hard. Often it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think as time goes by, I think I'm liking it more, and I think maybe it'll be more necessary. Uh, like if I don't do it, I feel sort of bad, like I haven't flossed my teeth, or I haven't exercised, or um, <laughs> or I haven't meditated. And it's like I have to get in there. But then, like once I get myself in the studio, and actually music is very important. I forgot to mention that. Um, so I, you know, I have the music that I like playing, and then, and then it can be very enjoyable.